Hi everyone, welcome to this Wednesday of Thy Kingdom Come week. We are going to be thinking today of help and uh, there is a, a sub-theme of prayer and care. But before we come to that, let me just remind you of something that's happening tonight and that is the third of the four sessions on the New Testament You Never Knew. This is one that concentrates on the ministry and letters of Paul and we'll be thinking about two of his letters in particular but also thinking about the themes that go through Paul's letters. So do join me together, join me for that uh, tonight at half past seven and the doors will be open at 7.15. Today, I want us to think about where we are in liturgical time and also our circumstances. As we think of liturgical time, we're in what you would call a liminal period between the ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the apostles are waiting in Jerusalem for something to happen. And each year at this time it feels the church is is waiting for something to happen and in relation to our circumstances surrounding us we are still in that very strange liminal place of lockdown where we are isolated from one another to a very large extent so let's think for a moment of where Jesus is in this story at the time. Jesus has returned to God the Father and what has happened to him? He has not only ascended but has been exalted to God's right hand and there he serves as our great high priest presenting the sacrifice of himself before God and interceding for us. This is a bit of the story of Jesus that is so often missed out. Missed out to our, our great misfortune, really. In the Reformed tradition, because of what happened at the time of the Reformation, we tend to have an aversion to the word priest. Except that we think that all Christians are priests. We believe in the priesthood of all believers, and that is that every Christian has the authority to come into the presence of God to pray and to offer, offer sacrifices of thanksgiving. We are part of a priesthood and Jesus is our great high priest. I'm going to show the screen again with you so that we can read a passage from the letter to the Hebrews at the end of chapter 4 that links Jesus as our high priest with this thy kingdom come theme of help. Hebrews 4, beginning at verse 14. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to feel sympathy for our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Amen and thanks be to God for his word. The writer to the Hebrews was writing to people who were effectively known as Hebrews. They were, they were Jewish people. And the whole book is steeped in 
the mindset of the Old Testament and the Old Testament sacrificial system, the whole theme of the book of Hebrews really is that compared to that system, Jesus is better. What's all this about a high priest? What is the purpose of a high priest? Well, in the Israelite system of sacrifice, the high priest was allowed on one day per year to go into the most holy place, the holy of holies, within the temple. No one else was allowed to go, and he wasn't allowed to go on any other day. This was Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the day when the high priest went into the presence of God to make sacrifice for the sins of the people. The writer to the Hebrews essentially says, this is a shadow, a foretaste perhaps, of the real thing. What has happened between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost and even now is that Jesus went into the presence of God, acting as the high priest on the day of atonement, and he has made and is making his sacrifice to God for us and for our sin, the forgiveness of our sin. So this high priest is really important. And the author of Hebrews points out a couple of things that is really important for this high priest to be. And that is, he is one of us. He's a real human being who knows what it's like to go through all the testings of humanity, all the temptations that we suffer, all the suffering that we go through. So he knows that, and yet he has gone through that without sinning. And this is Jesus, who is also called the Son of God. In other words, Jesus is both human and divine, and Jesus, therefore, is the perfect mediator between God and humanity. The author of Hebrews then says, well, because Jesus is there in God's presence, you can come to God. You can come into God's presence. You can come with boldness. You can come with confidence. Because Jesus has already offered for you what is necessary for you to come into God's presence. So often it is that we have such a sense of our guilt that we don't want to come into God's presence. In fact, we want to flee from God's presence. But the writer of Hebrews says, no, come with confidence, come with boldness, because it is there that you will find mercy. It is there that you will find the forgiveness of your sin that is necessary for you. But more than that, it is there that you will find the grace to strengthen and help you for this moment, for the here and now, for what you are going through at this particular time. You will find grace to help in time of need. And so we come before God's throne. We come before God's throne, not only for ourselves, but for the world in which we live. And as we have received help, God wants us to share that help. God wants us to encourage people to come into his presence on the basis of what Jesus has done, that they too may be strengthened for the moment that they are going through. There are many going through awful times across the world and we're going to remember 
these folks in our prayers at this time. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come into your presence with confidence and with boldness, knowing that Jesus has gone through the heavens and is in your presence, presenting his offering, his offering of himself on our behalf, on the behalf of all creation, that we might be cleansed and renewed. Help us to come to you with confidence and boldness. And we boldly ask for those who are struggling with illness that you would strengthen and heal them. We come with confidence for those who are grieving that you would surround them with your love, comforting and sustaining them. For, the, for those and this is most of us, I think, for those who are fed up with lockdown and would love to be out and about, we pray that you would help us and you would strengthen us for this moment with your grace, that we may get through without spreading the disease to other people. And that we would get through sustained by the knowledge that Jesus is praying for us. We pray for those who are celebrating. Thank you for things to celebrate at this time. Thank you. But we pray for those who feel cheated because they can't celebrate with their loved ones. May they have an opportunity either electronically or in person later, to joyfully celebrate together. And in this time of special prayer, we pray for those who lead Try Praying and Thy Kingdom Come, that using all these resources that are to hand for us, Many people may be drawn into your presence, where Jesus serves as our high priest, offering mercy and grace to help. And let us also say the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen and thanks for joining me today and look forward to seeing you tonight if you can make it. But if not, remember to stay safe and stay in the presence of God. Amen.